I'm Robert. Robert Martin. His music is known worldwide. His guitar playing is legendary. From a street beggar in Atlanta, Georgia, to the multi-talented personality he is today. A true superstar. One of the driving forces behind the world-famous band Anapra. But he is just as well known for his solo efforts as Manilow's stepchild. Yet, as a young man with a profound gift for music and an unending supply of inspiration, very little is known about him. Where did he come from? What kind of childhood did he have? Are there any skeletons in his closet ready to be uncovered? Let's find out as we go Behind the Music. Come on, buddy. Robert came into the world the normal way. It was Saturday, the 21st of February, 1987, at 5.58 in the morning. He was 8 pounds, 11 ounces, 22 inches long. But, even from the very beginning, his parents saw something special about him. Go ahead and sing. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. The two people responsible for bringing this precocious bundle of joy into being were Paul and Maria Martin. They met in Connecticut, fell in love, and got married in less than a year. They moved to Maryland where Paul got a job as an engineer for DOD while Maria became a full-time stay-at-home mom. By the time Robert was born, Paul and Maria already had a baby boy that they named Jeffrey. Robert and his older brother Jeffrey spent the first few years of their young lives in a small basement apartment which Maria's parents graciously provided. This is where Robert learned to walk and talk, two very important skills that Robert needed on his rise to stardom. Robert and Jeffrey made the best of small place. Of course it helped that they were small too. But don't think that it was just all fun and games. They also had to, um, they, well, now that I think about it, it was all fun and games. But Robert's role as the youngest was soon supplanted by a little baby sister, Stephanie. Robert's parents decided to build a house in the country so they could have more room, which was a good thing, as three more sisters, Michelle, Kimberly, and Amanda, were all added to Robert's list of siblings. Robert was now officially part of a very large family, and as such, he was dutifully part of many family activities, be it vacations, family get-togethers, or partying with family friends. His parents were part of a local Christian community called Covenant Life Church, where Robert served with them in children's ministry. Through the church, Robert got to join Christian Service Brigade. He was able to do very manly things because of it. Best of all, he spent quality time with his dad. The church also provided a private school that Robert's parents sent him to. There he made friends, participated in field trips, and also got involved in school activities. 
One aspect of Robert's childhood was the special needs of his older brother, Jeffrey. All the sisters laughed at Jeffrey, but not Robert. He was more compassionate. N wait, oh, uh, he did laugh at Jeffrey, too. Uh, look, the point is, they all had a happy childhood. Being part of a large family can make you get lost in the crowd. But not Robert. He stood out, mostly in the area of sports. His first team sport was soccer. But this was just to pass the time, because his real love was baseball. But his interest soon waned as he got involved in other sports, much to the consternation of his father. Oh, here, come here, let me show you something. Man, this is exciting. When Robert started really showing promise in baseball, I, I had an idea and, and it was great. Look at this, come, come, look at this. I had him sign this baseball at age eight. Look at that. That's right, age eight, he signed it. And here was the plan. When he made it big in the major leagues, we're talking eBay here, and I was it was my retirement, man. It was my retirement, but he uh, he didn't really... I, I can't even think about it. Turn off the camera. Despite his father's misgivings, Robert started to show real promise as a basketball player. Oops, um, well, he did get better with time. Look how good he got. Got that ball, and he's throwing it in, and he's running down the court. And look, he's going to defend that basket, make sure nothing happens. He gets the rebound. Oh, he didn't get the rebound. But anyway, of course, he had two great advantages, his great height and great coaches. Robert had a great experience in high school with the CLS Cougars. But he dislocated his shoulder in the middle of the season, which effectively cut short his career in sports. But stardom was calling him in a different direction. It all started innocently enough, a love for a little known band called Pearl Jam, but slowly he became interested in different bands like Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, Doors, The Who, Jethro Tull, Beck, Opeth, The Clash, Soundgarden, Jane's Addiction, Fugazi, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Dizzy Gillespie, Billy Holiday, Charlie Bird, Sting, The Beatles, Bob Dylan. This obsession got so bad, he had to mainline, so he got a record player and started buying vinyls. Then it got even worse. While driving a car, he started singing to the radio. This type of erratic behavior usually indicates a deeper problem. So let's ask Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin, is it true? Does Robert take drugs? Well, of course it's true. So you're saying Robert Martin has a drug addiction? Well, didn't you know? No, we had no idea. Of course he does drugs. He has asthma. He has a boatload of drugs. <laughs> and there. He has an inhaler, he has nasal sprays, 
a little Vicodin when his shoulder is dislocated. So you're saying he's a drug addict? He is a drug addict. Yes, Robert was a drug addict. But even so, he was able to rise above his drug dependency in order to learn to play the guitar. He was able to create a Shakespeare band with his friend Andrew. In English, he got an assignment to write a paper on the influence of Shakespeare on modern literature. Here's what he turned in. We got a music video. Good song, yeah. A good, a good song, a music video for our band, because we're a band, you know. Shakespeare band. Shakespeare band, you know. We have a music video. Why don't we, uh, can we cut to the music video in this place? Cut, cut, yeah. Yeah, cut, cut. Cut, cut the hair. It's a song about the Detroit Shakespeare. Oh, shit. Hey, Shakespeare, so lovely. History, comedy, tragedy, 37 and all. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, I think you got a B for that assignment. It was that kind of creativity that constantly got him misunderstood as a teenager. He tried to eat their food. He tried to join their clubs. He even tried to learn their secret handshakes. But they all just <laughs> laughed at him. So he wound up going to Georgia in order to become a protest singer. Now I'm telling you here about this silo that's going to be torn down for government use of the property. I just want to let you know that this has been serving the community here at Ashburn, Georgia for a long time now. Um, we just want to do everything we can to save and This is a song I wrote and all the proceeds of the single album I will be putting out We'll go to the silo. The silo is big and it's long and tall. And we need to save the day. We need to save the souls. The souls of the silo are. I'll come to your house and I will 
make you eat five dead mouses. You're gonna die if you litter, because I'll kill you. about how coke killed little babies in the third world countries in Guam. Coca-Cola, you're a terrible man. All the coke is made in Japan anyway. Japan. Coca-Cola. <laughs> this guy right here loves Coke the most. <laughs> has made him a prisoner. <laughs> got him. Coke has got him. Coke has owned his soul. Soldiering to Georgia only lasted a week. He found he couldn't make a living, so he came back home to Maryland and a new chapter in his life. Back in Maryland and back in high school, Robert found that his experience on the road had made him a better man and now he was able to fit in and make friends. He found he was very good at debating. Daniel Webster even admitted to, to taking dirty loans. The bank was uh, using bribes and different things and supporting basically different senators. And... Wasn't that a insightful and salient point? I'm so proud of him. Robert also put his musical talent to work in the classroom. Sing a me muse and through me tell a story of the man skilled and always of contending. Beyond this creative outlet, he was able to join the church's mission trip to Mexico. He was able to help with their building project as well as bond with the little orphans. Even though Robert became a model citizen, he still needed an outlet for his protest side. So he created a production company, Grateful Doors, and he teamed up with NAACP and the PBS to create socially aware documentaries like the misunderstood monster Grendel. I know. I have foreseen this. My liver! You hey, have my liver really hurts. You have what we call liver disease. Hey, ah. G Man! I have to go to the party. Hey, there you go, let me get it for you. Yeah! You dirty oh. Keith! Get him! Oh. Give me my oh. liver! Oh. Oh. Get him! 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 Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! You see, he was very, very, very misunderstood. You see here, he, uh, he was trying to save his life, so he ate a lot of people. Wow, well, um, I think he won an award for that one. Yeah, it was really good. And he also did a documentary dealing with the evils of asbestos. Um, these living conditions are quite appalling. Um, I'm not really sure why anyone would ever want to live here. Oh, there's, uh, now I see him. He's coming. Get out of my house! Get out of my house! It's mine! 
And it's torn down and you killed her. You did! You did! I still see you Earl did. has not let this go. Even though Robert was getting accolades and awards for these wonderful documentaries, his life took a totally different turn when his talent was noticed by a local band leader, Ryan Van Orsdale, and he asked Robert to join the band Anapra. I, you know, I thought a lot about whether or not to, you know, have Robert in the band be beforehand, be you know, before I made a decision. And what I, what it came down to is really, you know, there's other people that didn't have mohawks as tall as his, you know, and one night we were up late, uh, like I think we were somewhere in Ohio, on a tour bus, and uh, we were talking about Jesus, and he said, yeah, I think you need to become more like Jesus, and so I took my shoes off. And so that's how Robert became part of the band. Also in the band are Neil Stuckensnyder playing bass, Robert's brother Jeffrey doing sound effects. And like any other rock and roll band, they had several drummers before they settled on Brett Jones. Since this is Robert's story, let's find out what the band members think of Robert's contribution to the band. You know, Robert's always got a good sense of what needs to happen in the music in order to kind of bring it together you know he's got a good sense of his role um, always kind of working with that synergy with the other people kind of bouncing it off of each other and since Robert and I have been playing music ever since we both picked up our guitars it's always worked out really well him and I and you know with the other guys and um, but um, while he uh, always knows what works, he's always willing to try what might potentially not work because he's ambitious like that. Hmm. It's very, very telling of his character, so. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I like how he uses, he uses all of his fingers. Um, you know, I, I think in his guitar playing, I think that sometimes he channels the spirit of Leatherman right out of that you know that Pearl Jam tour classic. You can, you can literally hear it. Wow. Literally. Wow. Hear it. Cool. In your ears. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Damn. Oh, that. This too. So, Brett, what do you think of Robert's Died contribution to the band? Itself into a duel, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against. That's uh, great so Shakespeare, sorry. Brett. But oh, what about Robert? God. How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Feel not okay, Brett, thanks for your input. Garden. As you can see, Robert is invaluable to the band. Here's the band in concert, playing a song from their latest EP, We Can't Be Killed. The song's called, It's Not All Right To Be. Oh, mm -hmm. 
As you can see, Anapra has a distinct sound, sort of a fusion between hard rock and jazz. Who knows how far God will push them, but we do know Robert will be along for the ride. One chapter in his life closed as he graduated high school on June 10th, 2006. Robert William Martin. Robert, we remember your creative mockumentaries for English class. <laughs> especially in your role as the monster Grendel. We remember your summer mohawks, your love for music, your unexcused parties, and your stimulating questions and thoughtful insights. Robert, we respect your desire to be an authentic Christian and the impact you and your fellow musicians have made in small churches and coffee houses throughout our area. We respect your keen mind, your skillful pen, and the growing humility that will help you use those gifts for the advance of God's kingdom. Robert, with faith in God and gratefulness for you, we present you this diploma. Senior class of 2006, you are now officially graduated. We hope you've enjoyed Behind the Music, featuring Robert Martin. We've seen Robert grow from a young baby to a young man. He's a son, a brother, a friend, but if you need one word to describe Robert, it would be true. Because he's a true friend, a true believer, a true talent. A talent he knows comes from God, and a talent he wants to give back to God. Robert, you're the music man, the writer of deep thoughts. You buck the status quo for Veritas. You're a seeker who has found it. The future may be unknown, but you're facing it with the one who knows. And we're beside you as well. Walking with you into the great tomorrow. We love you and thank God for you. We love you so much and thank God for you. We love you 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 and thank God for you.